Thank you, worship team. Appreciate you guys. Oh, thank you, Lord. Well, we are continuing on uh, with our summer series entitled No Limits. And the title of the message today is No Limits to His Lessons. No Limits to His Lessons. Several weeks ago, I was asked to do a wedding uh, for a couple that's been a part of our church. Her name is Lisa. His name is Pablo. And they asked me if I would be willing to perform the ceremony for them up on their property. They have a property up in Apple Hill area, beautiful setting up there. Um, the actual place where we were going to do or where we did the ceremony is up amongst the apple orchards on a piece of property that they own. When I went up to do the service for them, um, it was about two in the afternoon that the ceremony was scheduled for. And I remember how hot it was. It was one of those extremely hot, hot summer days. And so I took my position uh, out in the apple orchard. There was no shade anywhere as I stood at the front waiting for uh, the wedding party to come down. Uh, and they all came in and as they were taking their place, uh, I was holding my iPad and the sun was just beaming down at me. And I noticed I was having a real hard time seeing the words because the sun was so bright on the screen. And so I was trying to silt, uh, tilt it a certain way and get it just right so that I could be able to perform this ceremony well for them. Pablo and Lisa take their place and we begin to go through the ceremony. And I remember about halfway through, I just finished the vows uh, with them when all of the sudden, this is what happened to me. My screen goes black and this is what comes up on my screen. My iPad shuts off. Folks, this would be the worst nightmare that I could ever think of as a pastor standing in front of this audience of people gathered for this beautiful moment. I remember in my head staring at the screen as the temperature sign comes up at me and inside of myself, as loud as could be, I heard this, no! I found myself in a position I didn't want to be in. After a long pause, in fact, I think I did a little bit of a Stevie Wonder. I was kind of going, <laughs> smiling, you know, hoping that just maybe it was going to cool down. <laughs> and they're looking at me, and I'm looking at them. And finally, I have to confess in front of this entire audience of people, I said, folks, I just want you to know that my... Uh, my screen went completely black because uh, it's too hot out here. And uh, folks, uh, I don't really know what to do next. Um, and, uh, you know, I'm staring at the screen and just as my screen went black, my brain went blank as well. And so I'm just looking at them and they're looking at me and yeah, I just think, well, I, what's next? You know, I, I, so I, may, I say, the rings. <laughs> Who has the rings? Pablo looks at me. I said, Pablo, the, the rings. I said, Pablo, put that ring on the third finger of Lisa's left hand. Now, this is usually where I say, repeat after me, but I had nothing to repeat. So I say, Please, put that on the third finger of Lisa's left hand. And Pablo, proclaim, <laughs> proclaim your love for her is what I said. 
proclaim your love for her. Pablo is looking at me. I'm looking at him. And he says, and his English wasn't really good. He says, I love you. And Lisa says, say it louder. And Pablo didn't hear what she said. So I look at Pablo, and I said, Pablo, say it louder. And Pablo says, say it louder. I said, I don't, I don't know, folks, I don't know where we're going from here. I made stuff up. Uh, you know, I just grabbed whatever I could to get through. I prayed the longest prayer over a wedding couple I've ever prayed. I would have rather have been anywhere than there at that moment. But I can tell you, your pastor learned a very valuable lesson. Always, and I mean always, if I am doing an outdoor summer wedding, I will have a hard copy of that ceremony with me wherever I go. get such pleasure out of my pain, you know? <laughs> Today we're going to talk about how God's lessons have no, lo no limits for us. And when we are faced with hard times and difficult circumstances where we would rather be anywhere but there, and we begin to question where God is and what He's doing, when we're in the middle of those experiences and we're wondering where he is, we're going to find out today that God has lessons he wants to teach, not only for you, but others around you. You see, when we're in the middle of experiences and we'd rather be anywhere but there, 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 there is a passage of scripture that we all know so well. It's Romans chapter 8, verse 28. When we're in the midst of those circumstances, we quote this passage quite often to one another. It's God's promise to us, and it says this. And we know that for those who love God, all things work together for good for those who are, call, who are called according to his purpose. Look at the amplified version and the way it reads. I love this. It says, and we know with great confidence that God, who is deeply concerned about us, causes all things to work together as a plan for good for those who love God, to those who are called according to his plan and purpose. Today, I want you to turn with me to the Old Testament. And we're going to see how God can take even the worst of circumstances and turn it into something for our benefit, not only our benefit, but the benefit of others. Turn with me to Judges chapter 14. This is the story of Samson, who is going down to the city of Timnah to take a bride for himself. He was going down there to get a wife. And I want to pick up the story starting at verse 3. And it says, But Samson said to his father, Get her for me. She's the right one for me. His parents did not know this was from the Lord. Samson went down to Timnah together with his father and mother. As they approached the vineyards of Timnah, suddenly a young lion came roaring toward him. The Spirit of the Lord came powerfully upon him so that he tore the lion apart with his bare hands as he might have torn a young goat. Sometime later, 
When he went back to marry her, he turned aside and looked at the lion's carcass. And in it, he saw a swarm of bees and some honey. He scooped out the honey with his hands and ate as he went along. When he rejoined his parents, he gave them some and they too ate. And in verse 14, he comes up with a riddle that says, out of the eater, something to eat, out of the strong, something sweet. According to this story, we see Samson, he is on a journey to Timnah, and he's walking along, minding his own business. It says that he was doing the work of the Lord, when out of nowhere, suddenly, he finds himself in a fight for his life. Suddenly, he's attacked. Suddenly, he's blindsided. I want to talk to you about the suddenlies of our life. These are the things in life that hit us and we don't see them coming. Have you ever been journeying in life when out of nowhere you've been hit by something? Kind of like a Mack truck has come your way. Um, the best way for me to illustrate this is when I was about 17 or 18 years old, I was taking my nephew with me. He was about... Uh, eight or nine years old, and it was a Tuesday night, and we were on our way to Christian Skate Night at Sunrise Rollerland. <laughs> I think they're still doing that. Like 40 years later, it's still going on. We were on our way to Sunrise Rollerland. I lived over off of Greenback and Dewey. I had just crossed that particular intersection on my way to Sunrise Mall. I had another friend I needed to pick up, so I pulled into the turn lane. It was nighttime, and so I paused for a moment, saw that everything was clear, and then I turned into the, uh, the, the, the lane to go across Greenback Lane when out of nowhere I was struck by a black VW Volkswagen bug that had its lights out and I never saw it coming. As I made that turn, it slammed into the side of us, drove us off the road and into a ditch. I don't know if you've ever been in an accident before, but when it happens, it's like everything slows down. Glass is flying everywhere. There's smoke, there's debris everywhere. At one minute, we are headed in a certain direction, and the next minute, we are slammed into the side of, and all of a sudden, we're off in a ditch somewhere, laying there confused and bewildered about what had happened. I will report to you, everybody survived the accident okay. But I am sure this is exactly what happened to Samson. He's walking along when out of nowhere, a lion shows up and attacks him. Many of you have been hit by the suddenlies of life. You got a pain in your body and you go to the doctor and all of a sudden the report comes back and suddenly your life has changed forever. Or maybe you've been working at a job and you were laid off or let go and then suddenly you're put in a position of trying to pay the bills and just make it. Maybe you didn't see it coming when your spouse tells you they want out of the marriage, they're done, and suddenly your life is turned upside down. Or suddenly you find yourself in the spiritual battle of your life. Or you're going through difficult circumstances. Or maybe you've been attacked by coworkers or family members. Or maybe you were in a literal accident and it changed your life forever. Suddenly everything is different. The list is endless as to the kind of suddenlies we can find ourselves in. Samson is attacked and suddenly there he is in the fight of his life. But notice what verse 6 says. I love verse 6. It says, when he is attacked suddenly, the spirit of the Lord came powerfully upon 
him. Here is what I do know is true for every believer that goes through extremely difficult circumstances. You will find a strength that will come over you that is not your own. Have you ever been there before? You're bewildered. Life has rocked you. Circumstances have bewildered you. And yet the Spirit of God has given you the strength to face whatever it is you're going through. And even though you don't understand everything that's happening, you find yourself in a supernatural strength. You find a supernatural strength in Christ right then in that God gives you to make it another day. Philippians 4.13 says, For I can do everything through Christ who gives me strength. I've heard this statement over and over again from believers who find themselves in these circumstances. They will say this, and maybe you've said it yourself. I don't know how the world does it when they, and maybe you quote whatever it is you're facing. Have you ever said that before? Raise your hand if you've ever said that before. You know what you're actually saying? You're saying, I don't know how they do it because the only way I'm making it is through a supernatural strength that God is giving me to make it through. I think we would all agree surviving painful, traumatic, difficult seasons can leave us scarred for life. How is it even possible for Romans 8, 28 to make sense in light of these most difficult kinds of experiences? How can all things possibly work for the good when I feel so bad? What kind of lessons can God teach that are for the good? The first thing I want to say is God doesn't want you to survive. Write it in. He wants you to thrive no matter what you go through. For those who only survive life's suddenly moments, they become a shell of themselves. The enemy wants to capitalize upon life's difficult moments, and he has his own lessons he wants to teach. He wants you to become a prisoner of your past pain, haunted for the rest of your life. He wants that pain to seep deep into your joints of marrow and drain the life out of you. But God has declared, my son and my daughter, not only will this not destroy you, it's going to produce something good in you. I'm telling you, the most profound lessons in our lives often come out of the most painful moments. Notice what happens to Samson after he's attacked. Samson goes on his way down to Timnah, but there's a key phrase that could easily be missed. Look at Judges 14, verse 8. It says, sometime later, he went back to marry her. He turned aside and looked at the lion's carcass, and in it, he saw a swarm of bees and some honey. I want you to underline the term sometime later. This is a key phrase. How much later? How much time had passed by? Well, the answer is found in the presence of the bees in the carcass. We know, or scientists know, or those who study bees know, that bees will not set up a hive in a rotting carcass. So what we estimate, or what the scholars estimate, is a minimum of about a year had gone by before these bees would have set up residence in this carcass. Here is what I want you to get. A significant amount of time had passed from the time he was attacked to the time he returned to the scene. In fact, I want you to write that word down, time. From the time he was attacked to the time he went back to the place where he was attacked. You know, there's a very popular saying, and maybe you've heard it before, time heals all wounds. Have you heard that? I'm here to tell you that's not true. (laughs) Write that down, would you? That's not true. (laughs) Write this down if you would. It's what we do within the time that will determine the ultimate outcome. Put that in as well. And then lastly, write this down, if you would also. If I do nothing, fear can grow stronger, pain can run deeper, and the enemy can gain a foothold. The key to growing through life's difficulties is action, not time. 
I, I want you to look at, at the painful, difficult, traumatic seasons of life in this illustration, like a flat tire. Let's imagine that you went into a, a, a store somewhere, a department store, and then you came out only to discover where your car was parked, the back left tire is flat. Now you have one of two things that you can do. One thing that you can do is, is get out be behind where that tire is, pull up a chair and sit down and wait for air to go back into the tire again and somehow self-inflate at some point. You can just kind of sit and wait for the circumstances to get better. Or you can go into action, look in your trunk, find the jack, pull it out, undo the tire, and put on the new tire. Or you could do like me, call roadside service. Where's my roadside service crowd? God bless all of you. Hallelujah. Called them many times. Action is the key to progress. Samson action was he went back. He went back to the place where he faced the trauma. He could have avoided that place altogether. Now catch this. He could have said to himself, I'm not going back through the vineyard. I'm not going to the vineyard where I was attacked any longer. I'm going to go through the open country and come down another way. I'm going to avoid the place where I was attacked. I'm going to go another way. And that's the first lesson God wants to teach. Don't avoid the pain. Write this down if you would. Turn and face it. Amen. You got to turn and face it. Samson went back to face the lion. Everybody listen to me for a moment. If you don't face your lions in life, you'll run from them for the rest of your life. If you don't face those moments, that lion, that thing where you had trauma, that thing where you had a heartache or difficulty, suddenly it's hit you. If you don't turn and face it, it'll be after you for the rest of your life. In fact, the Bible indicates to us what does it say in 1 Peter 5, 8? Stay alert, watch out, for your enemy the devil prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. If the enemy can keep you on the run, running from people, running from pain, running from problems, he knows you will never learn the lessons God wants to teach, and that's exactly what the enemy wants, to keep you on the run. But Samson didn't run. He went back to the place where he was suddenly attacked. And when he looked up, this is what he saw. Follow with me, verse 8. He turned aside and looked at the lion's carcass. And in it, he saw a swarm of bees and some honey. He scooped out the honey with his hands and ate as he went along. And then he came up with a riddle. Out of the eater, something to eat. Out of the strong, something sweet. So what are the lessons God teaches us if we're willing to face the lions of our lives? Number one, write this down if you would. The lion is dead. You've survived. You've come out the other side, my friend. That lion is dead. Whatever it was, whatever came against you, Jesus has brought you through. You were alive and you have power over the enemy in Jesus' name. Amen. That lion is dead. Amen. It's been defeated. No, you don't want to go through it again, but hallelujah, you are victorious. You have learned 1 John 4, 4, and have overcome them because the one who is in you is greater than the one who is in the world. How about Isaiah 43, 2? When you go through deep waters, I will be with you. When you go through rivers of difficulty, you will not drown. When you walk through the fire of oppression, you will not be burned up. The flames will not consume you. Amen. Philippians 4.13, for I can do everything through Christ who gives me strength. Yes. Samson looked up and he saw that thing had no power over him because that thing was dead. You know what usually has the power? The ghost of the past, not the thing. The legend grows bigger the further we get away and we run. 
Samson looked up. He saw that it was dead. There are three things that Samson saw. Write it in. He saw a carcass, bees, and honey. Look at what Samson did. He walked over to the carcass and he reached inside. This is key. If you're ever going to learn the lessons God is teaching you, the most difficult lessons of your entire life, you're going to have to let God reach in side to the deep places of your life, no longer hidden from him. You're going to have to expose the innermost being and let him go into those most painful moments if healing is ever going to come your way. There can be no more off-limit signs. You will have to let God reach deep inside and touch your pain. You will have to be vulnerable to the Holy Spirit's work so he can expose what's deep inside. It's never fun, but it's necessary. And it's here in this place. God teaches the greatest and most valuable lessons of all. When Samson reaches in to get something, notice what is present. There are bees inside. And I have news for you, and you can write this down, folks. This is the truth. It's going to sting a little bit. Whenever you go back to painful moments, whenever you face those lions of your life that have about destroyed you, it's going to hurt to go back in order to overcome. And it's going to sting a little bit to get what God wants to give to you. I'm here to tell you it's going to sting a little bit. It's going to hurt, but don't run. Face the pain. Face the trauma, the hardship, the brokenness, the loss, the heartache. Yes, it's going to hurt a little, but it's at this moment something powerful happens. Samson reaches inside, past the stinging, past the pain, and he scoops something out with his hands. Look at verse 9. He scooped out the honey with his hands and ate as he went along. And then he had this riddle. Out of the eater, something to eat. Out of the strong, something sweet. This is Romans 8, 28. In living color, God works all things for the good. Here is the lesson God is teaching. Out of the eater, something to eat. What does that mean? Out of that thing that about consumed me, about destroyed me, God is going to turn it around and he's going to give me something that will nourish me. Out of the eater, out of that most difficult circumstance, I have something to eat, something that is going to sustain me, a lesson that God is bringing into my life. Wow. Out of the eater, something to eat out of the thing that almost killed you, write it in. I will give you something to nourish you and out of the strong, listen, something sweet, out of the bitter, out of the bitter, I'm gonna give you something, a sweet truth that when you finally discover it, it's gonna change your life forever. It's gonna nourish you along that journey. It's gonna go from a bitter circumstance to a sweet one. God is gonna turn it around and teach you lessons like you have never known before. Out of the bitter, I'm going to turn it into something sweet. And as you journey along, it will nourish you and it will strengthen you. Isn't that true? Some of the most amazing lessons I've ever learned have come out of surviving the lions in life, the suddenlies, the deep valleys. It's in those moments I've experienced. How many of you have ever experienced God in ways you've never experienced Him before when you've been in the midst of those circumstances? You've discovered things that that you could discover no other way. I have found those lessons have sustained me. And they've gone from bitter to sweet. Write this down. Your trial lasts for a moment. Your lesson lasts for a lifetime. Not only can God nourish and sustain you, that we're going to wrap up this morning. Look at what Samson did in verse 9. He scooped out the honey with his hands and ate as he went along. When he rejoined his parents, he gave them some and they too 
Hey, do you know what's happening here? The ministry of reconciliation. When you turn and face your lions, maybe the lion was alcoholism or drug addiction or abuse. You finally turned and faced it. And now God has set you free. All of the destruction that came with it, God has now brought something nourishing to your life. It's been sweet now that your life has turned around, but it doesn't stop there. Now you take the sweetness of your life that's been transformed and you're handing it out to anyone else that comes your way. Here, mom and dad, have some of this honey that I discovered from that carcass in my life over there. Here, this is going to turn your life around. Some of you that come through divorce, right? You decided, I'm not going to be angry or bitter about this. I'm going to let God heal me. And through that healing, I'm going to give that sweetness to others that are experiencing the same pain. How about those of you that have gone through sexual abuse and now you've come out of your shame and God has healed you and you've faced it and it hurt a little bit, but now you're able to love others out of their pain as well. You've gone through sickness and loss and heartache. You see, some of you seated out here today, You haven't learned the lessons because you haven't faced the lion. Maybe it's time you quit running and turn and face it. Something amazing will happen to you. You'll discover the love and the strength of God in a whole new way. I'm not going to sugarcoat it this morning. It is going to sting a little bit. It's going to hurt. But if you stand firm and you don't run... God is going to teach you lessons that you never thought possible through the most painful moments of your life. When are you going to finally go back and face the thing that still is holding on to you? Isn't it time for a change? I want to close with a very practical illustration today. The ushers are going to help me out if they'd come right now. I'm going to pass something out to you. And I want you to take one, and I want you to hold on to it. Don't do anything with it. Just hold on to it. Go for it, guys. Just start. Let's get it as fast as we can. Don't be picky. Just grab one. I'm about to teach a biblical lesson. <clears throat> there is a warning label on here. It says eating multiple pieces with a short, within a short period of time may cause a temporary irritation to sensitive tongues and mouths. <laughs> Disregard that. <clears throat> Don't open it. I want everyone to have the joy of having one. So don't pass the bucket by either. We're getting there. We're getting there. Guys from the rows, jump over to other rows. Help them. Joe, go to other rows and let's fill in. You guys ready for a practical illustration? Out of the eater, something to eat. Out of the strong, the bitter, something sweet. So in just a moment, we're going to rip these things open. I'm going to ask you to pop it into your mouth. And I want you to bite into it. I want you to suck on it. And I want you to give me one minute. Don't spit it out. Be like the coach here today. You can do this. Suck it up, folks. I want you to hang on here. You give me one minute. I want you to. Is everybody ready? Everybody has one. Take it out of the package and hold it between your two fingers. And on the count of three, who's got a timer? We're going one minute. I need a one minute timer. We got it up here. We're going to bring one minute. Here we go. Hold it up on. Don't you spit that out. 
One, two, three. Suck on that thing. Come on now. Come on, stay at You should see some of your faces. Oh my goodness, look at you people. Come on, fight it through. Come on now. I, I have to be able to talk. So keep going. Come on, how long are we? 21. Look, look, something bitter. Something's starting to change. Is anything starting to change for any of you? Something changing. Raise your hand if something's changing. Something's changing. Yeah, keep going. If you're not there yet, keep going. Oh, you mean it went from something sour, something bitter, and it's moved to something sweet. You, you pressed on. You fought it through. Wow. Huh? I found, I found the slogan for our message today on the package of warheads. You know what it is? It says, survive the sour, savor the sweet. Now you're on the other side. Look at you. You guys are like, and now you're all, that was easy, Pastor. Look at you all now. You're all smiling. Got a piece of candy in church. That's really what we have to do. We got to face that bitter to get to the sweet. And I know this morning, we're going to take a little extra time, so if ultimately when we start the altars, you've got to go, I understand, but there are some people today You've been running from lions for a long time. Whatever those things are, and Jesus wants to set you free today. In fact, he wants to teach you brand new lessons. And for some of you, this is going to be hard because they're painful moments. I want my pastoral staff and my prayer team, please come, if you would. This is a really serious moment. This probably won't have everyone responding, but there are some of you today, you know that there have been things that have just held you back. We're going to pray for you this morning. We're going to believe God for you today. Out of the eater, something to eat. Out of the strong, the bitter, something sweet. I'd like to have the house lights brought down if we could. And if we could have everybody stand. And if you need prayer this morning, you need a breakthrough this morning when it comes to this topic, I want you to just come and let us pray for you today. As the worship team gets, begins to play, come and we want to pray for you this morning.